everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're a new viewer, this is a new mini-series about lots of fun and easy ways to integrate digital resources into your card making. I started the series due to some medical challenges that have kept me away from my card room for a few months, but I think you'll be amazed at the number of ways you can easily add some digital tools to your card making tool belt. Hopefully, I will be back to my regular card making life soon, but in the meantime, today's tutorial is in response to my friend Katie, who is also a member of my Sandy's Poema card making community on Facebook. Katie asked me to teach a lesson on how I stage my card photos using digital resources. I've been doing this for a few years now, and I really love it. It's a fast process and it's super easy and I don't have to have a supply of flowers or other props available in my card room. Now I know that not everyone regularly takes photos of their cards, but hopefully this tutorial will inspire you to start keeping a record of your beautiful creations. It will also help you display your work more effectively if you do want to post to any of the card sites on social media. But Stick around to the end of the lesson and I'll show you how you can use the same process to highlight and improve your family pics, your vacation photos, basically any photographs that you take. Before we begin though, I have a few housekeeping points to cover. First, here is a list of some of the topics covered in my last video. In this series, I'm planning to build upon skills from one tutorial to the next, so it may be a good idea for you to review any lessons you have missed before starting new ones. I'll post a link to the first tutorial up here in the upper right of the screen. I'll be using the free version of Canva for almost all of these tutorials. However, there are some really helpful tools that are only available in the paid pro version of the software. So if you're interested in checking out a free 30-day trial of Canva Pro, I'll include a link in the description below. And finally, I'm including a bonus for you with this tutorial. I'm really excited about it. If you look in the video description below, you'll find a link to a PDF handout that you can print. It will give you step-by-step -step instructions of the whole process that we will cover in this tutorial. So you can just sit back and enjoy and not worry about taking notes or trying to remember everything automatically. I hope this will encourage you to try this out for yourself with any photos you may have on your computer. We'll be making three projects in this lesson. In the first one, I will demonstrate how to build a template that you will use for all of your card photos from now on. There's no need to rebuild the wheel every time. Just build the template once and then plug things in the next time you need it again. I chose this card because of the stones that are in the background. The card reminded me of a kind of zen feeling and I felt that the stones went really well with that theme and I couldn't have done that physically in my card room. Digitally, though, all things are possible. You can tell that my initial photo and the final result look completely different. In the second project, we'll repeat that process with th this new card, but this time we won't need to build the template from scratch, and you'll see just how easy it is to do once you have everything set up correctly the first time. And finally, I wanted to demonstrate how to use this process to edit and enhance any of your family photos. This is my sweet Sonny modeling the new raincoat that he got for his third birthday. As you can see, the original photo didn't do much to show him off. So I used this very same process to enhance Sonny's picture, and I can hardly wait to show you how to do it too. So let's get started. So here we are on the Canva homepage. 
and I'm going to click on custom size and have this little screen pop up and we're going to do a custom size of 8 inches by 8 inches and be sure this little drop down tab is set to inches when you do this. Now you're probably wondering why I would pick something so large and I'm going to explain that to you in a minute. In fact I have a couple things that we need to talk about before we actually start designing. So I'm going to click create new design and then and let's talk about those two things. First, there's a brief explanation about why I chose to make my document 8 inches by 8 inches. And I know even this slide looks really confusing and you see my little emoji down there of me looking kind of confused with all this math. The main thing to know is that digital images are measured in pixels. They're little teeny squares and and a picture is made up of lots of little teeny squares compressed together when it's on a digital screen. So those are called pixels. And when you display a picture on a digital screen, like an iPad or a computer or a phone, the minimum number of pixels per inch to make that image look clear is only 72. But when you go to print something, you need to have at least 300 pixels per inch for it to come out clear. So why did I choose 8 inches by 8 inches? Here's why. Because when people are on design teams, like Altenew, or like Katie who asked me to, to do this video tutorial. She is in the Altenew Educator Certification Program and you have to submit photos of your staged cards. When that happens, they have a minimum requirement of 2200 by 2200 pixels. And who's used to thinking in pixels? Not me. So when that first happened and there was no explanation when I was in the program and when I had to submit for design work I had no idea what I was doing and I had no idea what that meant. So I had to learn for myself and basically what that means is if you're going to print something, which apparently Altenu wants to make sure that what you submit to them can be printed clearly, when it needs to be printed it has to be 300 pixels per inch. And so if they're requiring 2200 pixels, you just divide 2200 by 300 and that comes out between 7 and 8 inches. And here's the thing, it may be 7 or 8 inches, but when you make it smaller, it will stay clear. But if you take a small image and you try to expand it to the 300 ppi, then it ends up pixelated like this picture I put on here. So what does all that mean for you and me? Well, the bottom line is it's better to make big and then if you're going to print it on a smaller size, take that image on your computer and, and bring it down to the small size. You can't go the reverse way. So start big and then you know you're, you're clear. And for those of us who have these kinds of commitments, and are starting down a path of being submitting photos for different reasons to things, then it's really good to just start at this size and then you know you're covered. And even if you want to submit a photo to something on Facebook or whatever, even though it's on digital, you know you're still covered and that it's going to be good for anything if you do it at this size. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Our 8 inch square is actually 2400 by 2400 pixels and so it's at a really great size to be able to either use digitally or print and you know that your work isn't going to be all fuzzy and blurry. So I know that's math and everything but hopefully that makes sense to you. Just go big and plan big and then you'll have your bases covered no matter what you want to use your image for. Oh boy. I hope you're hanging in there with me because that's the most complicated thing we're going to be talking about all day. The rest is easy. So then the second thing that I needed to cover with you before we start is actually taking your photo of your card. 
And here I have one of my cards that I took a photo of and there's three points I want to make. One is use a background that is high contrast with your card. So this particular image is probably not the best one for that actually, but you can tell that I put a light color behind the dark card so that there would be no confusion about where the edge of the card is. And that's gonna be uh, really important here in a minute when we start putting all this together. So you want to make sure that you don't put a light pink card on a light pink background or whatever. You want to make sure that there's high contrast and you can see the edge of the card all the way around real clearly. And you'll understand why here in a couple of minutes. The second thing, set your card up on something and that's the reason I picked this photo because I thought you could kind of tell that the card is not flat on that surface. I, I just use my little, what do they call them, chuckies, you know, that I use for when I'm using my, my Misty stamping tool that I rub on top of it for the stamp impression. It just, you know, it's just a couple inches high. I set my cards up on that before I take the picture so it's raised up above the surface and that really does help with how it ends up looking in the final product. So once again, Use a background that's in high contrast with your card. Set your card up about two to three inches above the table surface and take the photo as straight on as possible, at least the first photo. Get a good one straight on and then you can play around and take additional photos if you want. So with all that as background, let's go ahead and start designing. Here we are with our eight by eight square document. And the first thing I'm going to do is go up here to the top and give it a title. And I'm just going to call it card staging template so that I know what I'm dealing with here. So the first thing we're going to do is go over here to elements and we're going to search for a frame. Now the name frame in Canva has a certain meaning and in fact our very next video is going to look at some really fabulous things you can do with these frames that they have. But today we're just looking for a plain square frame so we're going to just say frames square and there we have the basic square frame. We're going to drag it over to our document and then I'm just going to drag it around use the bottom corner to just hold down my mouse button and drag that corner so it covers this document completely. And this is what's going to end up being the background for our card. But the reason that I called it a template is because we're going to do this just once. And then from then on, once you have it set up, you will just be plugging in every card that you want to do. You won't be having to go through this setup again. So this, the setup is just a one time only set up a template. And the first step to that is to put this frame in the background. And what we're going to do is go over here and change the transparency. So we don't even see it for right now. Move this slider all the way over to zero. And then we're going to use this lock and we're going to lock it. Now I want to point out to you that there's two settings on the lock. This first one when we click has a pencil to it and you don't want to use that. You want to go click it again and have it, this lock completely closed. The pencil lock just means that you can go ahead and edit it and it is, it's locked in place on the, on the document but you could actually edit it and we don't want that. We want it to be completely locked in the background until we're ready to use it. So now the next thing we're going to add is an envelope. And to find the envelope that we want, we're going to just search for mail envelope illustration. Now, I gave that to you on your notes so that you would be able to come up with the right envelope and not have to search too much. And it's this one right here. So we're just going to click on that and here we have this ugly beige envelope. We're going to move it around just by dragging with our left mouse button pushed down and highlighting it and just dragging it around. 
And then this little circle down here, we're just going to angle it like that. And this is subject to change. We may change it. We may, we may redistribute it somewhere, but just put it there as a template. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did with the background. We're going to set the transparency to zero because we don't want it to show right now. And we're going to do that double locking and this one just locked automatically like that. So now it looks like we have a blank canvas, but we actually have two things there. And now that's basically our template. There you have it. Once you do that once, you don't need to do it again ever. And what we're going to do is put in our photo of our card. Now to do that, you're going to go to uploads. And here you see I've uploaded a whole lot of cards already, but all you have to do is do upload file and it will open up your files and you can just choose which picture you want to upload. And this is the one I'm going to use right here. It will upload it over here and you can see that it's kind of blue and wavy until it's finished. Remember you're on the uploads tab right here and all I'm going to do is click on it and it's going to transfer it over there for me. Now you can tell that that picture is pretty darn ugly <laughs> and so it is in no way you know like the ultimate card picture. So for those of you who say to me I don't take very good pictures of my cards. I would say to you, neither do I, because that's pretty bad. But here's the good news. When we're working with these things digitally, you'd be amazed how it turns out. So just hang in there with me. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the background. And, and here's the thing. I'm going to remove it right here in Canva by clicking Edit Image. And then you're going to see over here BG Remover or Background Remover. However, that is a pro feature in Canva and you guys are all using the free version unless you want to try for that 30 day trial that I have down in the description, but that's okay. Because here's the thing, if you don't have the pro version, there is a free background remover. I have a tab open to it and it's called remove.bg, remove background. And all you do is before you upload your picture to Canva, like we just did, you upload it first here and then you click on a button and it removes the background. And then you save it to your computer and then you upload it to Canva. So it's one extra step, but it's not a big deal. You just, you just do the same thing. You click on upload image, you upload your, your original photo, you remove the background, and then you save it to your computer. And then you go back to Canva and you upload the picture that already has the background removed. Now, for me, because I have the pro version of Canva, I don't have to do that extra step. I have it right here in Canva, but either way, it's not a big deal because you just do it before you upload it to Canva. So what I'm gonna do is I have this highlighted. You can see, oops, you can see this is all with the little dots around it and the bounding box around it, which means it's highlighted. I'm going to go to edit image background remover and then it does its magic. It's working on it. This is why I said you have to have high contrast between the background of your picture of your card and the card itself because it reads where the card edges are. And look at that. It took that ugly background right out. Now I'm going to click apply and there you go. I have my card sitting here all by its lonesome. Isn't that cool? It's very cool. No ugly background anymore. It's all gone. Now I'm going to click on it so that that bounding box goes around it again. And now I'm going to go back up here to edit image. And I'm going to put 
a shadow on it because that helps it have that sense in the final picture of having some depth to it. And we already started that process by taking the photo with the card raised above the surface. And even though looking at it right now, you couldn't tell that it's raised, it still has that perspective in the photo, even when you can't see it. But we're going to add to that by adding a shadow. So I'm going to click over here, and this is totally available on the free version, and I'm going to choose Drop Shadow. And now you can see that it added this little gray shadow around there, and you can fine tune it even more if you click on these little little sliders right here. But you know what? I think I'm just going to leave it as is and I'm going to hit apply and save it with it on there. Now what I'm going to do is drag out these corners by holding my mouse button down. And this is where if my image was not totally straight, I could rotate it with this little knob. And now I'm going to go over and just do a little bit more fine tuning under the edit image where it says adjust and see all. And now we're going to play with it a little bit. Here's brightness. And I actually like it a little on the darker side for this image. Contrast is where you normally will raise it up because it will make it just pop off the page and be a little bit brighter. And you just play with these sliders till it looks good to you. All the rest you don't really need to work with, although you can try and see what it does to your picture, but clarity also is really good for making it seem like it's just popping off of the background and looking good. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I adjusted the brightness, the contrast, and the clarity a little bit, and there's my card. And I think I'm going to make it just a little bit larger. Now I also wanted to point out something else to you. For those of you who are in the AACP or who are going to be educators, I have a file folder over here that I made with all the elements that I'm going to be using. And I wanted to show you I have my guest designer tag in here. And so all you have to do if you're going to need that is do the same thing. Just pop it out over here, put it down here at the bottom, get it uploaded off of your computer, and there you have that. So I'm going to take it off of my design because I don't want it on this one, but that's all you have to do if you need to put a label on your work at all. So now my card is basically done. I'm going to highlight it and guess what? I'm going to lock it the same way as we did with the other element. So now everything's locked. But now we're going to work on the envelope. And if I just run my cursor over here, there's the envelope. I'm going to click on it. And you can see right here it has a little lock button, meaning that it's totally locked. But now I'm going to unlock it so I can edit it. And I'm going to change the transparency to go all the way up to 100 again. And there's my envelope. And right away I see, oh, you know what, I need to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to drag it out a little bit. And then on this one, I'm actually going to just make the envelope black because of the background that I'm going to use. Because, you know, I've already done this picture. But normally what you would do is, is choose a color right off of your card. And I'm going to show you how to do that on the next one. But for this one, I'm going to just go up here to where this, these are the envelope colors such as they are right now. It has the cream and the black. And what I'm going to do is click on the cream and I'm just going to go ahead and choose black and have a black envelope. And there you have it. And now I'm going to go back and lock it again so that nothing can happen to it. So here's our two elements. Now we're going to click on that background frame and unlock it. And then we're going to choose what background we're going to use. Now to do that, you go right back over here to Elements. And you're just going to search for a background. Now, of course, I already have picked out that rock background and we're going to use that. But you can do anything. You can search for 
like a gradient background is one of the favorite ones I use. And if you want to, you can actually filter these to be free so that you don't have to worry about, you know, getting the pro versions. And what you do, of course, this background would not work at all with this. But all you do is drag over whatever you think might work. Oh, I know what we didn't do. We didn't change that transparency all the way up to 100 again. There we go. Now we're going to drag this over and it's just automatically going to go in that frame. And I say, oh, I don't think so. That's not going to work. And I go up here to the undo button and just undo it. Now I scroll down till I see, oh, well, this is aqua. That's aqua. Maybe I'll just put that in there. Uh, no, undo, right? So now I think, well, you know, maybe gradient is the way to go. Maybe I want a textured background. So I just search for textured background. Same way, if I want to, I can go up and do static so it's not one of the moving ones and do free and apply the filters. And now I can look at textured backgrounds. Well, let's see. You know, do I want wood texture? Well, that's better than what we've looked at before, but nah, doesn't do it for me. So that's all you do. You just try in try in the backgrounds, any background you want, search for whatever kind of background you want. And it's just so easy. You just drag it in. If you don't like it, hit undo and do it over. So just in the essence of time, I'm going to go to my, my folder and I'm going to drag over the rocks. And that's what I decided I wanted. Now, if you, for some reason you decide, oh, those rocks look a little bit too bright and it doesn't highlight the card well enough, you can go to transparency and just lower the transparency of the rocks a little bit so that the card pops out more. Your choice, whatever you think works best, and you're done. That's it. You can unlock the card and make it larger if you want to. You know, you can adjust all these things, but basically that's all you have to do. And then when you are completely satisfied with how it looks, you click this little lock right here and then the entire image is locked and you're done. It's as easy as that. We made the template. We popped in the card, we colored the envelope, and we chose the background, and that's it. So now, if you want to save it, you're going to go to Share and Download, and you're going to save it as a PNG, which is what's suggested. It's a type of photo image. Here they have the 2000 by 2000 size. They're reducing it a bit and we're going to move it up to be larger and then download and it will download to your computer. It will come up down here in the bottom left. You'll see a pop up saying that it's downloaded. There it is. And then you just click on that and save it to your computer and you're done. So it is super easy to do this and there's so much variety of what you can do. As I said earlier, there's no way I could put those rocks behind this particular card. It just, you know, you're not going to do that in your card room, but you can do it here. laid plans I forgot to do something so I'm going to show you what I what that was right now as we move on to our second card I'm going to duplicate this slide and that's what I should have done the first time before I put the card on here is because you want to save your template so we're going to duplicate this this page right here so our first one is still safe and saved and now what I'm going to do is take off all of these things so that we can go back to our template again. So I'm going to unlock this page. 
I'm going to delete my card and I'm not going to take the card off. I mean the envelope off, but I am going to switch it back down to no transparency and lock it. And then on the background image, I'm going to do the same thing. And actually, I'm going to move this up to the top. That's what these little arrows are for here, moving, moving these different pages up and down. So here's our template. And that's the one we're going to keep safe and locked and have nothing happen to it because that's what we're going to use every single time. And that's what I should have done instead of putting my elements directly on it the first time. So now we're where we need to be. We have our blank template and we have one card done. Now, let me show you how easy it is to do a second card. We already have our template done. So we're going to duplicate the page. So we're working on a fresh page and unlock the page so I can add something to it. I'm going to go over here and add my card image. Now again, if you don't have the pro version, you're going to go and go to the remove background site and upload it here first and take the background off. But for me, I'm loading it straight onto Canva. I'm going to edit. I'm going to take the background off. Okay, there we have it. And I'm going to hit apply. Then what am I going to do next? I'm going to put my shadow on. I'm going to choose drop shadow. And there it is. I'm going to apply that. Now I'm going to make my card bigger by just dragging it out. And you can see that looks you know, kind of gray and the, the white in that vase isn't really white. So I'm going to go over here again to edit image, adjust, see all, and now I'm going to play with these sliders again. And so I'm going to do the brightness that made the, that vase look so much better. The contrast, see where I like it. I like it right there and I think I'm going to lower the brightness because those flowers don't have enough detail in them. So you just play with these two sliders until things look okay. That looks much better. I'm going to up the clarity and sometimes also the vibrance. It just depends. Just play with where you think it looks good. And I like that. This, let me see if I can rotate this just a hair to get it a little bit straighter, but it doesn't really matter. That looks pretty darn good to me. So now what I'm going to do is click on it to highlight it, go over here to lock it, come in here and click my envelope, unlock it, Now it's turning, this one looks black because I, I did it, I did it from my already existing card that I did. But normally when you do it off of the, off of your uh, template, it'll look like the original envelope. So now what am I going to do about coloring the envelope this time? Well, I'm going to go up here and click on this little square, the right hand square. The black on the left hand square is the lines that go around the envelope and the little shadow on the envelope. But I'm going to click on this right hand square. And what color do I want it? Well, it gives you a lot of choices down here, including these colors that they pick off of the image. But what I'm going to do is go to the plus sign right here. And then I'm going to choose this little eyedropper, which is called a color picker because you're going to pick your color right off of your card. And you're just going to go around until you see a color that you think from the card would be good for the envelope. That one's a little bright. Now I can do two things. I can click it again and go in for a different color, which I kind of like that. But I can also go right here with this little circle once I have a basic color 
and just kind of play with it. Just move it around. I can make it a lot lighter or darker and just play with it until you find something that you like. And I like that. So I'm going to click my envelope and I'm going to lock it again. Now I'm going to go to the background, unlock it, change the transparency, and I obviously am not going to use those rocks, so what am I going to use? I'm going to go ahead and go back to Elements. Here we already have Textured Background. What might I want on this? Let's see here. Let's do something wild and crazy. Probably too wild and crazy, don't you think? What about a sky? Mm, not exactly right. So what did I pick? Here's the one that I chose for it. And I like that kind of subdued textured gray. So I liked that. I go up here and lock the whole image. And I go over to share and save it again as a PNG to my computer. And that's it. Now we're ready to get started with any picture you have of a family member, a pet, just like my sweet Sunny. And what we're going to do is duplicate the template so that we're not working on the original and we're going to unlock it. Now we're going to just make sure that the background and that the envelope are both locked and they are. And remember, if you need to, you need to go to the Remove Background site first before you upload your picture to Canva. For me, I don't need to do that, and my file is already uploaded, so I'm going to go over to my folder that I have here, and I'm going to insert Sonny's picture. And there he is. He got this raincoat for his third birthday, and we just were so excited about it. We tried it on him right there and took his picture, and as you can see, there's all this furniture and everything in the way. So the first thing that I'm going to do is remove the background. And of course, you will have already done that if you're using the free background remover. And I'm going to apply that. Then I'm going to go over and add a shadow to him. There's that, and I'm going to apply that. And now I'm just going to make him a little bit bigger and center him a little bit on the page where I want him. And then I'm going to lock him in place. Now, for this, I'm not going to need an envelope, so I'm just leaving the envelope invisible and not worrying about it. I'm going to instead highlight the background, unlock it, bring the transparency up. Well, I don't want him on the rocks either. And just for the sake of time, I'm going to just show you what I did. I searched for, in, in the Elements tab, I searched for Rainy Street or Wet Street. And here it is. So I'm going to bring it in and just change that to that. And now he's sitting on a wet street. And then the other thing I did, which is also a pro feature, so I don't want to, to deceive you into thinking that all of these are for you. The rainy street was just a regular feature in Canva. However, there are some other things in the pro that have these overlays. And what they are is they have transparent backgrounds and different images on them. And so I searched for rain overlay and here it is. And I put it in here, oops. And you can see, oh, I need to lock that background before it messes up. And now watch this. I put it over Sunny and then because I don't want it in front of him, I want it behind him. I go to position and I go backwards and it goes behind him and there's my Sonny sitting in the rain on a rainy street with his raincoat and that was just that easy. And here's his original picture so that you can, oh the page is locked, hello, 
I was going to put it up here for you to see. I've locked him. I need to lock the rain. There we go. And now I'm going to just bring in his original picture. And you can see the difference between him with all the furniture and him on a rainy street. And look how fast I did that. It's, you know, the, the longest part for this process is just searching for the right background or the right, you know, elements that you want to put behind. But basically, that's as easy as it gets, isn't it? And all you have to do so is lock it. Come up here to share and print it or... In this case, with Sunny's picture, I might want to share it on social media. And I just click there and I can put it on a Facebook page or my Facebook story or Pinterest and just do it automatically from being inside Canva. Or I can just share it to my computer by downloading it as a ping. Um, here you want to make sure, since on this document I have four pages, that I want to unclick the zero, the one to four, and just do current page before I download it. Just like that. And it's downloading my study's picture, and I can save it on my computer. And how cute is that? So I wanted you to know that it isn't just all about saving cards, but about you can use this process and this template for anything you want to and have it turn out really fabulous. I mean, I'd like love to just sit here and play with you some more on it. But remember, all of this is in that handout. So you don't have to remember everything I said, or if I went through it too quickly, go to the description below the video. And there, there will be a link where you can actually get the handout and download it and print it for yourself and go one step at a time on your own time so that you know, this isn't too rushed for you. I've got so many other tips and tricks that I would love to share, but this tutorial is already getting too long. So next time we're going to look more at these frames and all the different things you can do with them. I really hope that this has been useful to you today, not just for learning how to stage your cards in an easy and quick way online, but also to play with your family pictures and your travel pictures and anything else that you'd like to just sort of have fun with and realize that it's not near as difficult as you might have thought ahead of time. So if you like this tutorial, please do comment below, click like, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love to have you here as a regular subscriber. Also, I'd love for you to check out my Facebook card making group. Our community is just a wonderful place for people to share and to make new friends, to encourage one another and to bless one another. So until next time, many blessings to you.